Looking forward to the actual sports cast. So, well, sports cast plus Dactronics. So what you'll see right now, when you first add your data controller for your sports bot, you will see a, a variety of different fields. So you'll see the sport that I, that I, that I assigned to. So let's go ahead and look at this drop down. Since this Dactronic sport is operating on standard football, or at least it was set that way, we can see that under sports cast, we have the option to bring in the format for football. So I pretty much clicked that, added it, and we'll see this panel here. You want to make sure that you use your license to make sure that you're actually actively being able to fetch information from SportsCast or your or, or your actual Scorebot um, device itself, then you will be a, oops, sorry about that. We will need a um, an actual uh, host. So for this example, I had to use the IP address of the actual uh, scrolling device itself since it's running in the local area network and is connected to the Dactronics unit. The SportsCast bot isn't relying on the SportsCast servers to fetch this information. So that's why I have the, the actual IP address for that device there. If not, and you're fetching from actual SportsCast cloud, you'll simply have to use their uh, cloud address, which is, I believe, something like sportscast.net.scorebot. Then the next things you have to do is your scorebot will have a bot number assigned to it, whether it's a virtual bot or a hardware device bot. You will need to use that bot number there. And usually what I've seen is channel for the channel number usually defaults to zero. You'll typically know in a, if you're in a, situ, in a situation where your channel isn't zero. And then, you'll, and then you'll hit the button connect and this will establish a link between your, your, your data controller and whatever it is that is sending that data. So now we can go ahead and play our football graphic. And we can see here, I'll bring in my picture in picture and we can see my hand here. So now I'm going to begin to interact with a device. So when we're, we're gonna go ahead, if we look at the clock right next to the first period, I'm gonna go ahead and start that clock. Go ahead and hit menu, start a new game actually. And then we can go ahead and start that clock and we can see the clock is running down and our score bug is actually getting those updates applied immediately onto it. So it's pretty much in real time. It actually is kind of hard to see the clock running down. Maybe just mouse over that, <clears throat> that mouse over that area on the screen. Oh, there you go, that works. Yeah, I'll make that screen a little larger. So we can see here that the clock is running down and matching pretty much what the Dactronics board is showing on its digital display or else, or yeah, it's analog display. So then if we want to, for example, uh, advance our period, we can go ahead and proceed in our quarter. So we'll go ahead and advance the period. We can see that on the actual graphic, we proceeded to the second quarter. Now do note that the, that the way we're seeing the data being produced in real time by the Dactronics board is similar to what you'll see if you connect via XML, if you connect via SportsCast servers, if you're using our scoreboard tool or using you know, new tech data link. All of these will pretty much be the same experience just from different data sources. So you can go ahead and add something like you know, score to our one of our teams. We can add in multiples of two because it is football three or maybe even six. Send that information and then we can do the same treatment for the other team as well. For example, we have our possession. We can go ahead and put the possession on. Let me see if I have that set up right on here to pass that over to the other on enter yes so we can see that now we are on down uh, on our down one and distance 10 and our position possession has been passed to the home team you can see if we can go ahead and pass this possession over to the next set play direction one ball 20 sure Let's do that and now we the possession over to the bigger team. That's so cool. We can do something like, you know, have our downs proceed over. We can go ahead and add to one, four. Am I sending that? First down, I believe I'm pressing something wrong, sorry. So down one, yes, enter. So there we go. We got the number of three for the down. If we go ahead and go yards to go and edit this value to be something like 12 and we hit yes, we'll see the value of 12 being sent. If I use my start clock right here that I have on the little button display here, I can go ahead and trigger that. And we can see that the clock number two on the little gray box is being updated. I can then hit the horn here to set that to 40. And then I can reset that if I need to and then run it again. As you can probably guess using these, um 
all sport services has a bit of a learning curve in and of themselves. And that's why it's nice to have Tidal or Live tie into it exactly so you don't have to have a learning curve for two separate score systems. Yeah, so it just depends what kind of gear you have, what you're familiar with, and what it suits. What, what is the least you know, tedious way for you to like figure out what it is? Because I've met with a lot of our users that already have a Dactronics board, but they don't have a TriCaster. So then I'll either suggest them like, you know, if it's within your budget, you can get a TriCaster and this will probably solve other workflow answers, like in terms of having an actual switcher that you can send NDI to, or maybe they already have things that speak for that workflow. Then it's just a matter of getting something that interprets the serial data and that solution in this particular scenario is a score link device. Depending on where you live and what services are available, something like Sportscast might not be at your disposal to get, but I'm pretty sure, and pretty much the way that we have this is a cord running straight into the AllSport. I forget the actual port for that cord, but you will see that there is a, a port that corresponds strictly for serial data. If you have a hardware device that can link to that serial data port and can host information via a local area network, you can use something like the like a like any kind of translation method to use our data controller to connect to that data. But one thing that I have found a relief, at least in terms of a lot of our users, is that a lot of their services do host XML data. And using the XML data controller or something like Stack Crew is, is guaranteed to get those live uh, in real time updates to their score bugs and other sports graphics.